we all, the dead believers and the living believers, are going to live together with Christ. And then he says, verse 11, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. He's saying, comfort and build each other up with this truth that you've not been appointed to the day of the Lord wrath. Instead, God has appointed you to be saved from that future day of the Lord wrath, and, and he's able to do that because of what Christ did for us when he died on the cross. And instead of our destiny being that day of the Lord wrath, our destiny as Christians is to live together with the Lord Jesus. And Paul says that should be a comforting truth that will edify or build us up. Intriguing thing about this, the wording that Paul uses here at the end of verse 10 of 1 Thessalonians 5 and then verse 11, we should live together with him, wherefore comfort yourselves, edify one another, are almost parallel to what Paul says at the end of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which as we saw in one of our earlier telecasts, is the most extensive passage in all the Bible on the rapture of the church. At the end of verse 17 of chapter 4, after talking about how the, uh, the dead Christians will be resurrected, and then they and the living Christians together will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, he says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 10, our destiny is to live together with the Lord. Coming back to chapter 4, verse 18, after talking about our being caught up in the rapture to meet the Lord, well, uh, so we'll ever be with him, he says, wherefore comfort one another with these words. By parallel, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, after saying, we're not appointed to the day of the Lord's wrath, instead we're appointed to be saved from that through Christ so that we can live together with him, he says, wherefore comfort yourselves together. Very parallel. And many scholars that I researched in this said, this language is parallel to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which is dealing with the rapture of the church. So the whole implication seems to be that the way in which we will be saved or delivered from the future day of the Lord's wrath is by the Lord Jesus coming out of heaven before the, the seven-year uh, period of, of God's wrath of the future day of the Lord will begin. The Lord will come from heaven. He will, by rapture, remove the church saints from the face of the earth for the purpose that we can be together with him which, by the way, is parallel with what we saw again in one of our earlier telecasts about the rapture in John 14, where Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And here's the purpose of this coming, to receive us, so that where I am, there you may be also. Again, the idea is so that you can live together with me. All these passages seem to be referring to the same thing, the rapture of the church. And so in light of that, I'm convinced Paul is teaching here in 1 Thessalonians 5 that church saints will not even enter into that future period of the day of the Lord's wrath, which will last for seven years here on planet Earth. And the way in which we will not enter into it is by being raptured out of the world by the Lord Jesus before the seven-year tribulation period begins.